Hey folks, welcome to Just a Guy DIY, where this week we're going to learn how to turn this bandana into a face mask. Let's get started. Now before we jump into making these masks, I want to give you all a background on this project. This is a project I've been doing for a few months and will continue to do for a while after I make this video, because I've been making them for myself and for my family for different reasons. I know I like it so I can use them for projects. You know, I like having a mask on when I paint. I also like keeping dirt and concrete out of my nose while I'm doing some stuff outside. I'm sure there's some other reasons I can think of. I, I, I don't know. Also, I want you guys to understand that this is a design I came up with by myself. Now, I'm not saying that to stroke my ego. I just want to cover myself here. I don't want you guys to see this somewhere else and think I'm stealing a design without giving credit where credit is due. This is something I came up by myself a few months ago and if you happen to come across the design somewhere else, alright, go for it. That's super cool. I'm not trying to steal this design for myself. Additionally, this is a bit of a time consuming but very simple project to get done. It takes me roughly two days to get it done, simply because I do it by hand. I don't own a sewing machine, nor do I want to. And I also like to take my time with each project to make sure I'm putting forth a result that I'm happy with, not compromising my work. As we get started here, let's run down the list of materials we need to get this project done. First and foremost, a bandana or any square piece of cloth that'll work out for you. Next, you'll need some pretty good thread and you need a fair amount of it, so don't be stingy there. Also, I have this little sewing kit here. This has almost everything else I need in it. It has my needles, some pins, some scissors to cut the thread, some extra thread, almost anything else you need. Now, here's a little bonus tip. I also like having an iron on hand or an ironing mat and ironing board to kind of help smooth out the cloth or bandana. That makes it a little easier to work with as we get started. All right. Just before I get into all the details, I wanted to give a brief outline of the whole project so I don't lose anyone along the way or it's easier to follow along with me. So the first main step is getting your bandana or cloth folded and stitched into this triangle shape. You're going to take that bottom point at the bottom and you're going to fold it up and stitch it into this kind of trapezoid shape. And then from there, you're going to shape it to your face so you get a form-fitted mask. Let's take a look at the details. All right, folks, so while I iron out the edges of this bandana to make it smooth and flat and easier to work with, as I said before, I also wanna run down the importance of thread. Uh, that's obviously one of the two main things you need for this project besides this bandana. So I found it's important that you find a thread that is sturdy. Uh, I found it's really easy to rip thread. You know, it's super, super thin. It's also really easy to get thread not knotted up. So you really wanna be careful when you're working with your thread. Uh, but please, find, find a color or something that, that, you know, helps with the design of the bandana. It doesn't have to be the boring white that I'm gonna use. Now, as I said before here, for ironing, you want to make sure you're doing this to really help smooth out all the edges, because it helps with all the folding and helping it all lay together smoothly. You know, it doesn't have to be insane. As you can see, I'm really just doing the edges. It's not taking me too long here. That's, that's about it here. Now, after you do that, you want to take your bandana, fold it, into the triangle, as I said. Grab yourself a safety pin and pin up the top of that bandana. There you go. All right, folks. If you're anything like me, this next step is gonna be the part you're dreading the most, and that's gonna be threading the needle. Now, I don't really have any tips or tricks for this. This is the way I learned back in uh, middle school during home ec. If you have a better way, go for it. This is just the way I know how to do it. Now, the first things first, you need to get your thread ready. And you need to make sure you have enough thread to go across the entire bandana. So what I do, 
I take my bandana, I lay it out flat, and I go from one of the top corners all the way to the point that you put the pin in, go to the other corner, and don't stop there. Go back from that corner you just ended at, back to the pin, and then back to the original corner you started. And then I also like to give it a few extra, extra tugs for, a, for good measure. You never know if you're gonna need some extra thread. That's gonna help with tying the needle and, and making sure you have enough to tie off each end. Now, after that, be very careful. I like keep it in my mouth so I know it's not lost. Get your needle ready. Now, take your needle. Carefully get the thread through the eye there. Double check, make sure it's in. Excellent. All right, now I have one end of the thread in one hand and I'm finding the other end of the thread over here. Now this is the part where I was saying you gotta be careful. Make sure you're not getting this thread all tangled up or else you're gonna end up with some knots. And that's happened to me a handful of times. So what I do is I have both ends of the thread in my hand there and I just do a loop through the loop and I tie it off. Now, I do that a couple of times just to make sure the knot there is large enough so it doesn't go through the bandana. Now, I got, I got some chubby fingers here, so I like using a little, a little set of tweezers to help me pull the thread through the loop. Once I get there, it's very helpful. Now that's all threaded and now we're ready to get sewing. So as I get started with the sewing here, I wanted to talk about a few things. One, I wanted to go into a little more detail about how and why I threaded the needle the way I did. And I also wanted to talk about the stitching that I'm using. So let's start with threading the needle. Now I'm gonna use this rope because I think it's gonna be easier to see. Now what we're gonna do is Take a look here. Now, essentially what I did with the thread was I pulled four, four lengths, all right? Now, this is one length, and this is not quite two, but we'll call it two. Now, that might seem like it's enough because it goes almost the whole triangle, but that's not quite enough because see what happens when I pretend these scissors are my, my needle and I thread it. Now, what did I do? I folded it in half and I tie the knot at the end so the thread doesn't go through the cloth. Now essentially what I just did was I cut in half the amount of thread that I just pulled and now it, well, barely even makes it through one half of the bandana that I need to sew. So that's why it's so important to pull that much thread. I know it may seem excessive at first, but I assure you it's important. You don't want to run out of thread in the middle of a project because then you might have to tie it off and start again, which might look a little sloppy, or you'll have to start the whole thing over again, and that's not fun. And it's also important because thread is pretty weak, and if you have it folded in half, you're essentially going to double the strength. And let me demonstrate that with this, what I'm gonna call the mistake bandana. Now, here, I was sewing this one up with red. You see the end there? I was stitching and the needle just tore right off. This, the thread just ripped and, and so even if you fold it in half, it could still be weak and that's another reason why it's important to get a pretty solid thread. You don't want to get some cheap thread that's just going to tear every time you try to use it. Now I'm going to use this bandana again to demonstrate the running stitch and the back stitch. So here it is. So you can see here the red thread is what's the running stitch. It's pretty typical in and out motion. Now, what I've done is once I completed the whole pass doing a running stitch, I go again and do the back stitch. Now I did that on blue here. So you can see the running stitch and the back stitch. Now, as you can see here on the other side where I, before the thread ripped, 
what it would look like, a solid line. So that's the reason I like doing the back stitch. I think it adds a really nice aesthetic. It, it looks better, and I also think, think it makes it a little more solid. You know, as I said, the thread is pretty easy to tear, but it's not necessary, because one of the first masks I ever made you can take a look here it's just the running stitch I didn't do the back stitch and, and it, it's holding up just fine but I just it's an extra insurance and I like it all right folks so here I have a completed running stitch along the whole bandana now I want to show you guys how to do the back stitch now I already have needle and thread ready to go and I already got it through one corner of the bandana on the opposite side here now, what I want to do is find where the running stitch is, and then I want to take the needle, carefully get it through, same hole, or pretty close. Carefully make sure it's coming out on the other end where there's no space between each, each, each thread. Play with it a little. There we go. Pull all the thread through. All right. And then I just keep doing that down the rest of the bandana. Let's keep going. So as you guys watch me finish up this back stitching, I'm gonna show you guys the completed version and the beginning of the next step. But an important note, if you guys keep watching me with the back stitching, you will notice a few mistakes I made. You will primarily see me fumble around a little and the thread gets knotted up. And that's exactly what I want you guys to try and avoid. So keep an eye on what I did and you'll see me try to pull the thread out where I accidentally looped it up a little. And just, as I said, learn from my mistakes. Don't make your own. Now here is the completed version of that bandana with the running stitch and the back stitch here all the way down and this takes me anywhere between two to three hours by hand and it, it takes a lot of time and that's just of me sitting and sewing not with breaks or just relaxing a little bit now the next step is to fold that bottom part of the triangle up now what I like to do is that there's that little 100% cotton logo I like to take that part and I like to fold that part up just so it's not visible in the completed product so once I do that, I take my safety pin, pin it up, and then it's ready to get stitched. So here we are with the banana pinned in this trapezoid shape and the thread. Let's get our thread pulled. Now remember, you want to make sure you pull more than just going up and over, right? You want to go over and back because now once the needle is threaded on this end you'll have enough to go the whole length and then we'll do that again for the back stitch let's get stitching stitching up the inside so it warms my face I want to show you guys how I tie off the stitch so what I do is I take take the needle I already got it set up here and I put it through one of the stitches that I made all right and once I get it through I loop it through the thread so it's tying a knot and then you keep pulling and then it just ties itself off like that so I'm gonna do that a handful of times I also find that sometimes you take where the eye is Put that through, it's a little easier so you're not worrying about poking the sharp end of the needle through the rest of the cloth or the bandana here. And it's really helpful. So that's two times, Here's three times through the stitch. And then make sure it goes into the loop so it's actually tying a knot and not just pulling some thread through the stitch so that's three times and here's four just for good measure you never know right, there we go and that's how you tie that off right, now there's just one little step here 
See, there's that little extra fabric, you know. Now you got the stitch and the seams on the inside here. There's that little extra dangling piece of fabric. I, I like to cut it off. It's It doesn't matter, but it's also the moment of truth because if you've done, done it all right, done a good job, cut that off and nothing is gonna fall apart. See any holes in the seam? Nice. You got the seam on the inside. There you go. A completed face mask out of your bandana. Well, here it is. DIY face mask from a bandana. What do you all think? Comment below. Let me know. Would you try it yourself or just buy one because it's easier? Just let me know. This is what I think about it. I obviously I enjoy it. I did the project. I came up with it by myself. And as I said, it's still pretty simple, right? Just the three main steps. Triangle, trapezoid, shape to your face. Little details in between and yeah, a little time consuming, but still pretty simple. Especially if you have a sewing machine. Let me know if you try it with a sewing machine. And this is also something I've done before, so I don't mind that it took a little while. I don't mind sitting down sewing while I watch some TV, listen to an audiobook, listen to some music, something like that. I also enjoy that it ties around the back, you know, it, it lets you adjust the tightness and it, it's not gonna irritate your ears with the loops. I also hope you guys enjoyed the video or learned something new uh, if you guys haven't tried sewing or stitching or anything like that. I hope you guys do try it yourself and if you do, comment below with a picture, let us see it, let us work on these things together. Uh, but now I gotta get going. My mom ordered a dozen of these things and I gotta get, get to work. So until next time, thank you all for watching.